TurboBit includes a calculator that you can use to figure out what your employee burden is. To access the calculator, you can either click the link, calculate the classifications billable rate per hour, or you can click the labor rate calculator icon. Enter the classifications wage, either a dollar per hour or a annual salary. Payroll taxes are called FICA, FUDA, and SUDA. And FICA and FUDA, they're both federal. SUDA is State Unemployment Tax Act. Each of those have a wage limit. What that means is once you have paid the employee the maximum wage limit, you no longer have to contribute towards that burden cost anymore. SUDA, you're going to have to find out what your State Unemployment Tax Act maximum wage limit is and enter that into TurboBid. The labor burden column represents common burdens that you will encounter. The amount column, that's where you're going to click into the cell to edit that number. That number will in turn calculate the amount in the labor burden amount column. The amount listed in the labor burden amount column represents the annual cost for that specific burden. You need to verify the amounts for your payroll taxes, FICA, FUDA, and SUDA. You simply want to click into the cell and then enter in what your percentages are. Workers' compensation varies from contractor to contractor. Typically, you don't have to have workman's compensation on yourself if you're the owner. If that's the case, double-click and make that into zero. Typically, workman's compensation premium are based on a percentage of your payroll. So you'll see in the labor burden column that will represent the annual premium for this employee. If you don't know the percentage and you do know the premium amount, you can simply adjust and play with the amount for the percentage and that will then adjust the labor burden amount. So just play with it until you get the labor burden amount correct. General liability insurance, that is the insurance coverage that will pay out in the event that one of your employees causes a claim on the job. There again, that's typically a percentage of the uh, payroll. Once again, if you don't know the percentage, but you do know the premium, just play with the percentage amount until the premium per employee is correct. Most of the other burdens, health insurance, picnics, parties, tools, and so on. They're self-explanatory. Uh, just put in your costs for the year and make sure you're not double dipping and make sure that you're not including that amount in your overhead as well. The sum of all of the labor burden amounts will be added together and displayed in the annual burden cell. After we calculate the annual burden amount, we need a method to break that down into a number that we can use in the estimates. The best way to do that is by breaking that down into a billable burden per hour. To do this, we need to calculate how many hours per year this employee will be on the job working with the tools where you can bill out for his time. That will be displayed in the annual hours. It will simply be a matter of taking the annual burden, dividing by the annual hours, and that will determine the billable burden per hour. The method that we use to calculate the annual hours for each employee is to start with 2,080 hours in a work year. That would be 52 weeks, 40 hours a week. Then we're going to subtract for time off. Notice there are five rows that deal with hours per year. Those five rows have the checkbox in the paid column. You're simply going to enter in the amount of hours that that employee will be not on the job 
where you can bill out for his time. In this example, vacation, 40 hours. Holiday, 48 hours. That would be six days off for holidays. Sick or personal days, 24 hours or three days. If you're going to have an employee that's away from the job for company meetings, regardless if you're paying them or not, account for the time. If you have a, an employee that needs to take off of work, at least away from the job, for training or education, put in the hours. If you're going to pay the employee for taking those hours off, you need to check the checkbox in the paid column. Doing so will add that cost to your burden so you can pass that on to your customers. Make sure that the annual hours displays a realistic amount of how many hours that employee will really be working on the job with the tools. You can add additional burden rows to this calculator by clicking on the add row You'll see that we already have a number of additional burdens in the drop-down. You can select from any of these, but to add anything to this drop-down, you simply want to click on the Add Edit Burden Items. You can edit anything that's in the drop-down, or you can click the Add New Line Item to add an additional burden to the drop-down. If you have a service technician and you want to account for the amount of time that they have driving in between calls or unbillable hours, there is a burden in here, unbillable service hours. So you can select that. Let's say that three hours per day are going to be spent unproductive driving around. You can see that it is subtracting those hours from the calculator. Look at the difference that that makes. It's also adding in the cost because you're going to pass that cost. You're paying the employee, so you need to pass that cost to your customers. Now, you can basically do the same thing here to manipulate the annual hours to reflect what an employee is actually working. So if, in all honesty, you think you're only going to keep an employee busy 1,000 hours, then just play with that number in order to adjust the annual hours where you need them to be. The annual burden is being divided by the number of hours to determine the billable rate per hour. The lower your hours, the higher that the burden is going to be per hour. So make sure that you're using accurate numbers. You don't want gray fuzzy math. Make sure you're actually incurring the cost. The higher your billable burden per hour, the less competitive you're going to be. To delete a row, select the row, select delete row. You'll notice that you have save group and save group as. This section here will list the name that the group is saved under. In this example, we have loaded the journeyman group. What this allows you to do is save these numbers, these values, everything except for the wages. The wages do not matter. They can be different for the same group. What this will allow you to do is if you have multiple employees that get paid the same benefit package or burden group, save it as a group. You can save it as to give it a different name, but then that would allow you to create a manpower classification for an employee. You can use the employee's name. And then when you get to the calculator, you would simply go to select group and select that group that you had saved that burden group under. When you hit OK, it will automatically populate this screen with the values that you had saved. So it's really just a shortcut to save you some time with your burden groups.